Imran Khan is a true representative of Pakistan. He's brash, chaotic, confused and terribly volatile. And in international diplomacy, he doesn't enjoy any respect. Hi and welcome to TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Apoorva and if you haven't subscribed to TFI English channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and also click on the bell icon to receive all the latest updates. Coming back to the story, I will tell you how Imran Khan proved himself to be a dhol in international diplomacy. So, let's begin. When Russia went to war with Ukraine, Imran Khan tried to make a big diplomatic move, visit Russia and show Pakistan's ability to play neutral. You know, he wanted the best of both the worlds, friendship with Russia and arms from the West. But Khan hasn't won generosity from anyone. Rather, he's being rebuked and snubbed from all sides, be it the US, the EU or Russia. As the Prime Minister, what should you do when two countries are at war? Avoid them, of course. But Imran Khan is well Imran Khan. He decided to visit Russia on 23rd of February. He visited Russia to expand Islamabad's bilateral relations with Moscow. He was in particular keen on greater coordination in the energy sector. Yet, only a day before his visit, Pakistan's ambassador to Ukraine, Noel Israel Kokar, had underscored Islamabad's support for Ukrainian sovereignty and territorial integrity. What was Pakistan actually trying to do? No one can understand. And it is unlikely that Imran Khan himself can explain what was going on in his mind. However, Imran's international embarrassment started in Russia itself. Moscow was found to be snubbing Khan during his visit. The separate press release issued by Russia and Pakistan did not mention signing of any agreement or MOU. So literally, nothing materialized during Khan's visit to Russia. Pakistan's efforts to raise the issue of its bilateral relations with India before the Russian leadership fell flat on their face. As expected, Russia didn't make any remark against India. And finally, a planned joint press conference was called off. If Khan had managed to come back from Russia without any gain or loss, he would probably have not been subjected to derision. But Khan ended up inviting condemnation from the West. The US, for instance, is upset with Pakistan. With Pakistan, it is being felt that Washington DC will hit Islamabad with indirect sanctions following Khan's meeting with Putin. In fact, the Federal Reserve Board's $55 million penalty against the National Bank of Pakistan is being perceived as a fallout of Khan's controversial visit to Russia. Meanwhile, the EU is also snubbing Pakistan. It started punishing Khan after he announced his Russia visit earlier this month. EU diplomats reportedly shot down Pakistan Army Chief Kamar Javed Bajwa's request to be invited to a high-profile multilateral conference on the Indo-Pacific last week. Another request by Pakistan for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell, was also stonewalled. As per the sources, Bajwa also wanted to attend the high-profile Munich Security Conference. However, organizers didn't fulfill his wish and pointed out that Pakistan's national security advisor, Moeed Yusuf, was already supposed to speak on the issue of Afghanistan. This is quite a disaster for Islamabad. I mean, there was a time when Pakistan was seen as a country close to the Western powers. But now the West wants to abandon it. And Imran Khan is therefore becoming a matter of derision in international diplomacy with an admonition from all sides. 